Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Asim, and today we are going to continue with the Python Web Scanner series. Today is going to be very interesting because we will be seeing how we can do multi threading. Earlier we, we were doing requests one by one, but in this part we will try to speed up our crawler and scanner rather because there is no point of having a slow scanner, right? Yeah, so that's what we're gonna try to do. I'll be continuing from the previous part. If you have not checked the previous part, make sure you do check it out on the channel. In the previous part, we checked out about how you can use Git and other things to version control your code. It's very simple. You can just go and see. It's a short video. We left off there where uh, we had to find out unique domains. We used dictionary to do that. And in this part, we, I was supposed to tell you about this. extracting the top level domain or the domains. Like let's say if you have api.amazon. So you just need the amazon.com. So that is what we are gonna look into this That will be the first part and later half we'll talk about multi-threading and fast making the process fast So let's first look at the channel uh, Challenge why it's a difficult thing and then we'll use a library to get it I mean you can also have a small what do you say uh, list but we'll use a library just to keep it handy So let's first see the problem and try to revise what it was. So this is the top 100.csv file. So let's say I want to get, uh, if you just see, oh sorry. If you just see here, there's this netflix.com, ftl.netflix.com, prod.ftl.netflix, API Global, Ikania Netflix, 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 Netflix. <laughs> so like for, for the first nine domains, it's just Netflix. And we would want, let's say, netflix.com and netflix.net. We, we might not want the, what do you say, subdomains in this case. Let's let's assume that's the use case for it. So what you could do is you could just split a dot and get the first and second part. Or rather this last and the second last part because here you would see this second last, the first part is FTL instead of netflix.com. Let's see how, how that goes. So this repo is still there. Uh, you can just go on to the website and rather let me just show you get remote hyphen v so you can go to python web scanner yt this is where you can download this and start with uh okay this one yeah so this is the link i would add the link in the description you can just download it from here download zip or if you if you prefer git cloning you can do that as well so you see that uh, i've added this requirements.txt file these are the things that would be required so i've added it here Let's see what I was talking about. So as preferred, I Python, or rather do, let me do it here. Zooming it here, I Python, sorry. And let's take a few domains here. Okay, so URL is equal to, um, Cool, I think that's it. Now the idea was we just need netflix.com and not its subdomain. So what we're doing is for URL and URLs, uh, URL, sorry, URL dot split. Uh, we would be splitting it on the dot and then trying to get the last part and new equal to plus the first the second last part and then i'll try to copy this oh, oh. all right <laughs> you are in new URLs. Uh, new equal to url dot split minus two plus url dot split dot i'll just explain it in a bit so jara Oh, sorry. I forgot to put here plus dot plus Netflix.com and Netflix.net. So what I did was I uh, this split function is available on any of the strings. So here I'm looping over this URLs list. 
and I'm getting one of one each URL one by one and then I'm splitting it on dot here so that it would split Netflix and dot and com in two parts so Netflix will be the minus two and com would be the minus one so that's what I've done and I split it here and this in the last part I got it Netflix.net so this is, uh, this is what I'm trying to do but let's say for example uh, URLs sorry This is the URLs, right? And let's say, uh, let's say here it is Netflix.co.uk, and let's say here it's Netflix.com, and now let's try with this. Or so you see here it's co.uk and in other it's right but this is not co.uk is not something you would want you would want netflix.co.uk so in some case it could be netflix like three domains and so in some it would be like two so <coughs> and then there's this co.in and all those kinds of subdomains no, sorry all those kinds of tld so for that i i prefer using this tld uh if you go to this question stack of flow you it would you would get, get an link to TLD extract, which is a library from Python. Uh, this is the command to install it. If you run pip install hyphen r requirements.txt, you would already install this. I think it's there. Okay, it's not there. Let me just install it. So, pip install TLD extract requirement already installed. Pip freeze. Okay, now it should be a uh, TLD extract yeah. So cool. So let's see how this works. Import TLD extract and then oh, TLD extract because then that that's a yeah. So now it's here. Uh, it showed an error earlier because this terminal it's the Python three from the main root directory. Whereas if you see here, you can see this when we are. It's a virtual environment inside here. So if I show you this when folder, this Python is running from here. If I show which Python, you would say it's from when bin Python. So <coughs> all the packages are installed in that particular when folder and those are not accessible to the Python that's running on this terminal. So that's why it happened. It's not a big thing, just something that you should know. Uh, let's say uh, TLD extract. Now I run this instead of running this new equal to TLD extract URL. So now it gives subdomain, domain, and suffix. So here you see suffix is code.uk, it has properly identified that. So if now it, I had to just like what do you say? Um, if now I had to generate the list of all that, uh, all the domains, what I would do is just uh, from the extract result, I would just get those things. dot subdomain exe dot domain and so I'll just get these two things exe domain so you are all equal to new dot domain See netflix.co.uk, netflix.com, netflix.com, all that is there. So if I run this on, where is this? I don't say, top100.php. Let's say I try to run this here. Uh, I think I can just run it like this. Uh, where is this? Line lines. Let me just uh, comment everything out. Just try to import TLD extract. I would prefer having an enter there. Uh, cool, now we have the URL. New URL, new domain. Now let me just add it here uh, the way we did for the top 100 uh, million top 1 million csv dot uh, file so let me create unique url equal to 
and just added a unique URL dot what is it uh, new URL equal to let's say true now if uh, once everything is in length of we will just want to have print length of unique URLs Python 3 uh, the Python would also do. Mm. Okay, sorry, my bad. I need to put it. Otherwise, it was always being. So you see, only 35 unique URLs, and these unique URLs are basically the only the domains that's up there. Let's say if I print this out as well. Let me remove this one for the sake of clarity. Let's see Netflix.com, Netflix.net, Google.com, Microsoft.com, Windows Update.com, Live, Office.com, App Measurement.com. If you see here, Data Microsoft, Windows Update, C CTLDL, Windows Update, Events.data.microsoft, Settings, Win.data.microsoft. Oh my god! So you see, there are a lot of Microsoft.com, but we just wanted the top level websites, not the subdomains of it. So we just got 35 of those. So that's one thing, let, let me just undo everything here and we'll continue with this multi-processing thing. Mm, There's a shortcut where you can just, how do you say, revert it from here. And then revert it from here. So this is available, this is the magic of Git that you can just straight away switch back to the version that was not committed. You can see there's nothing here. So now if I run this top 100 CSV, uh, Python, you would say it would take some time. Uh, let me add the time thing here. So I'll just copy it from here. I already have that time thing. Start time, end time. I'll just copy it from here. <coughs> Start time, import time. Cool. Now we'll let it run, and then I'll explain the code about before, like about multiprocessing. What's gonna go there? So uh, let me close this part. Cool. So in the multiprocessing thing, what we do is uh, we have workers, and the higher the number of workers, the maximum number of what is it processor that's running, and the faster you would get the results. So the main code remains the same this whole part if you see sorry this whole part here is the same as that's here except this opening part and this is inside the worker code so worker is basically that runs the um, code that you want let's say here in this case we are trying to get the urls and data so every time we basically we would want each of these workers to get data from that website. So that is what the work of a worker is here. If we have let's say 10 workers, so parallelly there would be 10 URLs from where we could fetch the data. So that's what uh, I'm trying to do here. The main magic comes here in this queue and process thing. This part is the same. We have defined the number of workers here. It's 10. You can increase the number. There's a limit to what it, you can increase and there's a limit to how much efficient it could be. It's not that if you change from 10 to 100, you would get a 10x benefit. You might get, you might not get, that would depend on some other like factors as well. Let's let's just not focus on that part right now. So for this, this, these part remain the same. Let me explain what's happening here. So Q is basically the normal Q. Let's say if you go to the movie hall or any theater or any show or any something like that, that there's a ticket counter, you make a Q there. So that's what the queue is here. There's this input queue. So input queue is where we would be adding all the URLs here. And these workers would be just trying to get the URLs from there. So there, let's say there are 10 workers. So assume there are 10 ticket counters and this is one queue and each of the person is going to each of these counters. So that's what the queue is happening. That's what the whole multiprocessing thing is here. Now we are trying to create workers here. So there's an array where we would store all the workers. Number of workers, this could be configurable. That's why I've defined it here. For i in the range, so each of these workers is a different process here. Argument, input queue. So each of these workers would be working on the input queue. So that's why input queue is the argument for each of these. And in the workers, I have appended all of these processes. 
and then p dot start to start each of these workers so every worker would just start uh, at once i mean each of each worker would be starting in this loop itself this uh, array is important because towards the end we would just like try to stop each of these workers now distribute the work so for ui urls each of these urls would be sending to the input queue and as soon as it would be getting added into the queue it would go to each of these workers for wn workers because we have to track the number of workers input queue dot put none so i'm just putting a value as none so basically let's say all the urls are done now i'm just putting none as the value for each of these workers let's see what happens here in the worker thing we'll come back to that code again so this part remains same headers cookie while true url equal input queue dot get so this is the same input queue that is being passed to this other variable so this input queue is shared between all the workers so it's trying to get one data from that input queue and no two workers would get the same day same data it's synchronous and that's how the queue is made so everyone would get one piece of data so let's say if the if the whole urls are empty now i have to just close the worker and just stop the process what i would say is i would pass a none value and when when none is passed to it if url is none break so basically this worker stops working if not if it's not none if it's a url it would just do what we are doing earlier which was in a synchronous mode rather one by one doing fetching the data so we were here for wn workers input queue dot put none so we would put none in each of these 10 workers and like 10 times the in the queue so one each of these workers put uh, put out one none and then stop working. So yeah, each of these workers would get a none and stop working. For Dublin workers, w dot join. So we'll write each of these workers will run the join command for workers. We'll wait for the workers to quit. Then we'll print the done. And this is how we are measuring time. So start time we have calculated time. And once this main program is running, this main thing. We'll print the percentage as second time dot time minus start time. So time dot time prints the exact current time. So it would just give a difference. So we did the same here. You see this 172 seconds it took for the normal web scanner. We had the start time at the top and there's this end time here. Now we'll run this MP scanner and you'll see magic coming up here. <laughs> magic. So it's the same thing. You see it's already going very fast. It should probably take 30, 35 seconds, something like that. Uh, I've tested it for a while. Let's see. You can even go faster with the async IO if I remember. And in Golang, it's way faster, I've seen, because the threads are very like lightweight. But yeah, I'll show you in this one because it's very easy to create. Even in Golang, I feel it's very easy to create. It's waiting for each of these workers. So for each of these workers, there's, there's a five second timeout. And if you see here, 32 seconds, and it, it's a consistent one. It's not that once you get 32 seconds, every time you'll get the like 30, 35 seconds in that range. And you can see that data is being fetched here. If you see this title office 365, and then, <coughs> so here you might see that aplimg.com and this title is different. So because each of these workers are printing randomly, so that's why it's there. What you could do is you could pass another queue, output queue to each of these workers and in the output queue, you could save the data or you could print the URL and the title of the data that's being fetched. So that would be like matching with the data to make it better. Again, 32 seconds, 32.228 and earlier it was, uh, how much it was? Um, 32.372 so just a small difference so yeah that's pretty much it see you in the next part